All right, back with the Petty Brothers, Timmy Petty, Mark Petty, Richie Petty. We're going to be discussing 1964, the World 600, when uh, Jim Pascal drove for the Petty Engineering. Mark's got a neat little story that Daddy always shared with him because it was that race was a, had a special place in Daddy's heart because it was just a kind of a thing thrown together and. Well, well, it's the World 600. Right, but I'm saying I mean, it's a big, just, it just it yeah. meant, meant a lot to him. So, and at the last was, minute, Grandfather yeah. put together a deal. So Mark's got this well, story like, that he shared yeah. with him. So here, he's going to well, share it just the 64. That, um, we, I was probably at the casino or somewhere at the beach maybe, but Daddy told a story about it was about a week before they were supposed to go down there and said, Grandfather come through and said, we need another motor or another engine. For Charlotte, he said, I made a deal with Pascal, and we're going to run him. And, and these were the Hemis, right? Yeah. The, the brand new. The yeah. 64 right. was the first year for them. Well, and who was uh, – Richard was running, obviously. Was there a second car and, and already? They was, well, they were doing really good, you remember, but it was early on in his but, but The fact is, Daddy looked at him and said – he said he – I don't have nothing. I ain't got nothing. And <laughs> he said, I ain't got no – there ain't no – we've got them all in use. And said, Grandpa, so what about them two in the floor? And he said, well, they're, they're all blowed up. And grandfather pretty much told him, make, make one out of them. And uh, they, <laughs> so he took <laughs> silver soldered the lifter board back in. Yeah, well, the valve guides, right? Yes. He, yeah. he said they, had, they literally was in such a hurry because it was last minute. Had to go. But he said, you know, they did all that work on the World 600 stuff because they had to go extra 100 now, miles. Now, grandfather didn't care. Because he just needed the car to start because he'd worked out a deal with right. Right. right yeah. I mean, he cared, but I mean, no, I know. But I'm saying but, he just needed to start money. So, anyways, Daddy said he said I didn't know if that engine was going to make the race or not, and, and turned around and won the race, <laughs> and said when they went through tech that the NASCAR officials were just shaking their head over the silver soldered mm -hmm. valve guides. And he it. says that's all I had. Yeah. Now he could go on but, YouTube and watch this race, and then when this race was over, they show Pascal pulling up in victory lane up on the. Um, the ramps, and then Richard pulls them beside him. But here's our dad. Can barely walk. I mean, at the time, he's, he's getting along better. But he comes and jumps on the back of that car, <laughs> jumps up on the hood, and you can just see how excited and how, how, how happy he was. And there's some pictures of him holding up money <laughs> yes. signs oh, on the pit board. Oh, he was tickled to death. He was tickled to death. So anyway. But, but I think it goes back, that's kind of, you know, one of Daddy's sayings all the way through life was, when it's your day, it's your day. Absolutely. And that was the point of that race. It was just, it was it was their day. Well, and, and even Grandfather always said that Pascal was his moneymaker. Yeah, right. when, when they put up, he was just Mr. Consistency, yeah. you yep. know. He didn't tear up a lot of stuff, and he made him made money. Thought, he thought a lot of him. Now, what's the rest of that story about about the air conditioner? Oh, that one on, yeah, the, 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 well, you tell it. Well, no, you know I didn't, it. no, I'm just saying that the, that, that was... They, they worked in this, had fans and, and windows, and Daddy said what well, that was the first air conditioner because of the money they made off that race, he could buy, finally buy an air conditioner to put in the window unit in the motor room. So he finally had an air conditioner because With of used stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. because when he told that story, it was, yeah, that's right. That, uh, <laughs> grandfather let him buy an air, air conditioner with the, uh, with the wind money. And that was the first World 600 that the Petties had won because at the time, you know, I guess the first one was run in 1960. And that was a big story about grandfather and, and Richard coming into pits uh, backwards and changing tires, and they let them run the whole race, and they disqualified them. So grandfather was pretty ticked about that. But anyway, they had a little trouble with the World 600, but it was you know it was only f four years in the running. So that was the first win for the Petties in, in the World 600. And I, I know you're talking about World 600s and being a big deal. That that picture of Daddy and Richard. In the winter circle, when they won Richard's first World 675, yeah. But you can see the look on their faces of how happy oh, they, they were. were. One of my favorite pictures ever. It's of, almost of like they're relieved. Oh, it was. It, it was they, a big they, deal. they finally crossed over the mountain. I guess. Well, at that point, they'd been trying for 15 years yes, and couldn't get it terrible. done. I mean, they and, and he always ran well there, even before '64. Oh, oh, he always and, run. What well, again? The world. It was the World 600. It was hard now, to win. '66. Marvin Panch in a petty car. Kind of similar situation. Situation. He won the he won the six hundred then, and Buddy Baker in seventy two, I believe it was seventy two. Buddy Baker won in a petty car. So the petties oh, had the eleven. In the eleven, yep. they had some success at the World Six Hundred, but Richard 
he always seemed to the gremlins seemed to jump out there and get him during that race. And like you said, seventy five, you can see this the, the joy in Daddy and, yeah. and Richard's face. It was and, an accomplishment. And here's the thing about this picture. There was a, a big picture of this. It hang it hung behind our grandfather Petty's chair in his house to the day he died. Mm -hmm. He always said that was one of his happiest moments of his racing because the joy in his son's faces. Yep. Who didn't show a lot of emotion? No, he didn't. But he, but you could tell he, that that made him really proud. But just to, just the look of his boys, the, the joy in their faces. It just I think every day he got up, he looked at that and put a smile on his face. And looking back at a lot of old footage of Daddy, you know, he didn't show much emotion either at the racetrack. But that that was one of the few moments, you know, holding the sign up and. You know, grinning, and you see some old videos of them when they won. Oh yeah, big races. But you like got to remember, '64. They was probably one pit crew going pit, for both. Pitting the '41 and the '43. Yeah, that's Whoever true. Whoever was leading. That's true. <laughs> so he was. He's worked his butt off. Yeah, he even talked about how tired he was yeah. after that. Cause so he worked. He he worked some tirelessly to get just to get that car ready to, yeah. for for the second car plus the regular car, and, and then, then he had to pit both cars. Yeah. So yeah, when the, the, you go back and watch that on the YouTube, the the '64 World 600. And you can see the joy in Maurice Petty when he he hurdles the car. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, and and uh, there, over the years, some of the conversations like Mark had and you did, but you know, I, I'd go over there and I was like, man, I don't know how y'all did it. And he said, we, we didn't know any better. That was one of his other sayings too. Yeah. And, and I'd rather be lucky than good. Yes. <laughs> and he always said too, he was thankful he grew up in that era, yep. even though it was hard work and all that. But it was a fun part part of time for mechanics because they could actually move the needle yeah they could do you things they, they made a difference exactly yeah. a mechanic meant, meant the world in them days today's racing it's a whole different ball game everything's kind of store bought store bought and ready to go well the, the, ain't nothing you can do you get if you if you put a <coughs> if you drill a, a hole example. somewhere they're gonna find you fifty thousand well, dollars. it's not a better example of him taking that What's heap the, of junk yeah. and making yeah. a winner out of it What's in stock car racing, as in drag racing, the man with the wrench is responsible for preparing and maintaining the race car in racing condition. He must be able to handle anything from a complete engine rebuild to a minor tune-up. Stock car racing is a team effort of chief mechanic, crew, and the driver. Dale Lemon quote, it wasn't always this easy. Uh -uh. <laughs> That's right, it wasn't. <laughs> All right, so if you got any comments, please like, like and, and subscribe. subscribe and give us some comments and stay with us. Comments are always appreciated. See you next time. One of these uh, large races, a 500 mile or 600 mile race, is accomplished uh, quite a feat because he's running against the best that uh, the automotive field can put out and get out and run as fast or faster than anybody else. I think it's quite accomplished in itself. Uh, plus, you get a lot of satisfaction beating all competition.